Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brethren in Christ, Laudato Jesus Christus in Sequila. Welcome to the Guild family stream. It is Friday within the octave of Corpus Christi, and we're going to talk about the subject that is perhaps the one that is most dear to my heart, and that is the meaning of Catholic. Eucharistic ecclesiology as the source and summit of the meaning of Catholic. This is the Guild family stream. In order to access the full thing, you have to be a part of our Guild community. So thank you all for being part of our Guild community who are watching this full stream. If you're watching this on public YouTube, you can get the whole thing at meaningofcatholic.com slash register. So here's what we're going to talk about. Uh, as I said, Eucharistic Ecclesiology. And this is what might um, bring out why, why is this apostolate? What does this apostolate exist? And what is the motivation? And why is it called the meaning of Catholic? And what is the meaning of Catholic? Well, I am here to argue that Eucharistic ecclesiology is the source and summit of the meaning of Catholic. The word Catholic means Eucharistic ecclesiology. And the Eucharistic ecclesiology manifests manifest this Catholicism, what it is to be Catholic. And we're going to talk about that and try to unpack that. But this is really only going to scratch the surface of really a mystery, a mystery of communion, a mystery of the church as the sacrament of salvation, the mystery of the holy sacrament as the source and summit, source and summit of our faith, but the source and summit of what is Catholic? So we'll, we're going to try to scratch the surface by going through these topics. One, the covenantal paschal mystery. We're going to look at the essence of the holy sacrament of the altar as it is instituted by our Eucharistic Lord in fulfillment of the typology contained in the old. In particular, we'll look at 1 Corinthians 10 and some passages from the Didache, the earliest written texts of the Mass that we have are contained in the Didache. The Didache, a.k.a. the Teaching of the Apostles, this text is, besides the New Testament, it's considered to be some of the earliest texts of the Mass. And we'll look at that and we'll see how that manifests the Eucharistic ecclesiology. St. Ignatius of Antioch, in his many epistles, he's the one who brings out this term Catholic in the context of Eucharistic ecclesiology. And we also see this in the Roman canon. And in the Roman canon in particular, we see the, the way that the, the one and the many, and the many and the one, are manifested because the Latin, we'll look at the Latin of the Roman canon, the Te Igitur, which is very fascinating because it seems to show this Eucharistic ecclesiology in the way that each local church manifests the Catholic Church, and at the same time, there is a union of the local church with every other local church. So we'll look at the Latin of the Roman canon there. And this is a manifestation of the full ecclesial quality of the local church. We'll talk about what that is. And then some of this will be my own commentary, where I, I would say that there is a, a, a tension in the history of the church between Romanitas and excessive Roman universalism against subsidiarity. And this is, I think, at the heart of the East-West dispute, and but also many other disputes in the church history, uh, there is this, it's really a manifestation of our communio, 
within this Eucharistic ecclesiology, within the perfection of communion. So we'll talk about later that there is communion. There is sort of an imperfect communion as regards to non-Catholics, and there's also an imperfect communion as regards Catholics. Uh, number eight, Ali, Ali Thevontes and Agapi, doing the truth in charity, truthing in charity. That is the effect of communio, and that is the meaning of Catholic. And then we'll get into the controversial waters, SSPX, that the SSPX is in communion. But the question is, does the SSPX refuse communion nevertheless in a particular mass in and of itself? And we'll talk about the local bishop. He's the final judge unless also the theological notes. How does that play into this? And then we'll talk about all these different aspects of communion, especially the things that have been brought out in the Vatican II ecclesiology. And I will argue that Vatican II ecclesiology is traditional, but there is a but attached to that because there's aspects of this which are problematic, which have caused ecclesial tension and various problems. Um, but the attempt of Vatican II is to recover various things that, had been obscured or de-emphasized, not lost, but recovering and resourcing various patristic notions. And one of these patristic notions in particular is that Eucharistic ecclesiology. That's something that has really been uh, resourced. And the potential of this is really just beginning, but I think the potential is immense. And that's what forms the meaning of Catholic. So that's all of the public portion of this. To access the Guild family stream, you can join the Guild, meaningofcatholic.com slash register. We ask for some financial contribution, which helps the apostolate. Daily prayer, just praying to invoking our, our lay patron saints for our lay apostolate. And then you have access to the Guild community. This is a community, a guild of Catholics working to unite against the enemies of Holy Church, in particular, economic support. For one another against the Marxists in all of our different situations across the Americas and the world. And the heart of this whole apostolate is our penance sodality, Saint, the Fellowship of St. Anthony, which offers up penance for clergy and seminarians. So you can join the guild at meaningofcatholic.com slash register.